Welcome. Welcome to the world of the Mad Hatter, where we are creating calm. This is Ann White, the founder of the Creating Calm Network. And the reason I chose the theme of the Mad Hatter is number one, the hats are kind of fun. And it's fun to have playtime in your day. And number two, it's all crazy here. Sometimes the world seems crazy. And amidst the craziness and the chaos, it is our challenge to create the calm. So that's what we like to do here. We like to create calm within the chaos. And you'll see the background is different if you've been following this show. I'm in the middle of moving to my studio office and I'm not finished yet. And there is lighting everywhere, but it seems like the lighting was better in my old office. So there's still work to do, but you know what? If we wait for perfection, it ain't gonna happen. So we roll with how we with roll with what we have, go with the flow, and just see what happens. One of the cool things about my studio, you'll see there's a background set. I don't know if you can see it back there. So once I learn how to work the other camera, I can broadcast from that set. Another cool thing about my studio is that I play crystal bowls. So sometimes we can energy tune with a little bit of crystal ball playing. So anyway, this is our official Mad Hatter hat. Try this instead of 10. Okay, the price is right on there as always. Ah, but the hat I'm going to wear today, I had to have lessons on how to put it on, is There we go. I think I have it on. Does this look about right? This is a fencing hat, and my husband's probably going to get mad because I bet I'm putting lipstick in this fencing hat. Why would I choose a fencing hat to wear on this show? Well, because sometimes we need protection when we are opening our hearts and letting other people come in. So this was the hat that I used to show protection. It's a hot hat. Could be all the lights in here that aren't really lighting, too. So today we're going to talk about how we can protect ourselves while we open our hearts to love, to share our love with the world. And in talking about love these past weeks, we've been talking about how to first love ourselves, because until we can love ourselves, ain't nothing going to happen. If we love the world as we love ourselves, most of the time it's not going to work because we treat ourselves with a lot of disrespect. We do a lot of negative self talk. We um, feed ourselves crap. We push ourselves beyond limits that are reasonable. So, in the previous programs, we've talked about how to give yourself a loving retreat, how to take yourself on a date, how to do beautiful self talk to yourself and honor yourself. So, Presuming that we have all of this goodness within us and we're ready to just open our hearts and share it with the world, how do we do that without having our hearts broken? And in beginning this thought, one of the ideas that I have, and it, this is when I was a divorce attorney and I would meet people whose marriages were breaking up and then I would compare it to people whose marriages were just so loving. And if you can find marriages where they were first lovers, where they were the person they each fell in love with first, wow, that is golden. Because our very first love, we open ourselves up with total innocence. And in doing that, we can really package the beauty, the purity of love and let it grow and be beautiful. However, the majority of us on our very first love have gotten our hearts broken. And once our heart is broken, we start building walls. And the more our hearts get broken, the more walls we build. And as we're building walls, I'm gonna take a sip of my Mad Hatter coffee. Matches my hat. 
So, how do we do this then once we have started building walls? For me, I like to love with carefree abandon. And when you can do that, Again, it's like that first love, it's ramped up, it's uplifted, it's just got so much more power and passion, but you risk having your heart broken. So you ride the high, but you also know that you are letting yourself in for a crash if someone does not value that kind of love. When I meet people, I like to give them the benefit of the doubt. And I like to approach everyone I meet thinking, I am really gonna like you. I am really gonna open my heart and share with you the love that I have because I am really going to like you. Now, that being said, there are people that are harder to like. Maybe they're just quiet, maybe they're grumpy. And so one of the things about when we meet someone who's a little more challenging is before you write them off, look for that gem of treasure within them. The bowl just wanted to play itself. Look for that, that hidden light. Maybe they have been beat down in their lives. So maybe you can help them excavate away some of their baggage so their light can shine. And I don't mean you're their therapist and you're gonna spend hours and hours doing therapy with them. What I mean is you're gonna honor them who they are and you're gonna find that goodness within them and then bring it to the surface. Um, try to connect with that goodness. And there are other people who seem unlovable, but you know what? They may need it the most of all because their journey may have given them a lot of, again, baggage. So the first part of being with people who you don't immediately connect with is to see if you can find their lovability, um, their gem, their treasures, and bring it out. Now, that being said, here's where we, we have the caveat. There are people in this world, no surprise, who are takers, who are users, who don't have good motives, and who will come in and stomp all over your heart and destroy that relationship. There are, that's where we need to do our protection. Now, one of the things is, first of all, to be alert for it. So you're, you're opening yourself up and you're loving with fullness, but then when you start getting those signals that you are um, with a user, a taker, build that barrier up and build a boundary because you don't want that negativity or that toxicity in your life. So build a boundary. And what do I mean by that? Very often our families, we have a family member, or maybe the whole darn family is toxic. Just because they're related to you doesn't mean you have to open yourself up for abuse. So you may have a family member who likes to pick on a weakness you have. What you do is you build that barrier and you say, you know, you are my brother, sister, mother, aunt, uncle, whatever your relationship is. I want to have a dialogue with you. I want to continue having a relationship, but I do not want to talk about this topic. So we can talk about all of these other topics, but I am not going to talk about this topic. This is our barrier. And if you choose to talk about this topic, that I am putting the barrier on, we're not gonna have a relationship. So I hope you value our friendship enough, or our relationship enough, that we can have all of these other topics. But not this one, we have our barrier there. Um, an example, and this isn't really a toxic one, my brother and I have different religious views. Um, my brother, we don't agree on religion. So without going into family history, just know we don't agree on religion, but we love each other very much. We just cannot have a religious dialogue. So we've made a boundary where we can talk about anything else in the world except religion. And it works very fine for us. Every now and then he'll say, could I just have five minutes to talk about religion? And I go, okay, five minutes, I'm starting the clock. But most of the time I say, no, <laughs> we don't have to talk about it. So even with someone you love, you might have to have topics that are out of bounds. 
another thing you can do is with this boundary, sometimes boundaries are not enough. Sometimes you have to remove that person from your life because I'm not saying we should love everyone and open our hearts to every kind of person because there are those users. So sometimes you have to remove toxicity, negativity from your life and just say, it's, it's not possible for us to continue a friendship. Can we have a mutual respect? But our energies are different. I usually try to say that instead of saying, your negativity is just weighing me down. Oh, that's a little more. So I usually just try to say we have different energies. Try that. Know that if someone is a real jerk, leave it to karma. Karma will take care of them. They will have to, they live with themselves. That's bad enough. Another thing is when you have to push a person out of your life and not have, you know, to break a relationship and that person is still doing evil, or still talking about you, a saying that, I think it's from the 12-step program, but it works beautifully, is pray for the son of a bitch. I can't think of a nicer way to say it because it doesn't work as well, but pray for them. And you're thinking, have you lost your mind? They're really nasty, but first of all, they need it. Second of all, praying for someone else changes your energy vibration and therefore it heals you from carrying that toxic waste. So when you have people that are really weighing on your mind, don't carry it, build boundaries or end the relationship and if you need to pray for the son of a bitch. Not necessarily for them, even though it could work, but do it for you so you can clear yourself of that energy. Another thing you can do is if you've opened yourself up and there is a toxic person, it, once you've done the boundaries and protected yourself, you know, we're practicing safe love here. You know, it's like wearing a giant condom on your heart. But um, is to use that person as your teacher. Everybody we meet is a teacher. Some of us teach love, some other friends teach peace, some other friends could teach acceptance, but some could teach what it's like to live a negative life and why you don't want to do it. And how to protect yourself or how to spot users and abusers earlier in a relationship to get your friendship condom on. So use negative people as a teacher Embrace the lesson that they have and learn from it. Please don't ever get jaded. Don't get jaded. You know, it's a crazy world and if our light dims and we find ourselves getting jaded, it's our loss and it's the world's loss. So learn how to experience a carefree love without abandon until you get niggles that you need to protect yourself Learn how then to protect yourself by trying a boundary, by trying an honest dialogue saying the, this is where we can be friends and this is where we can't, by actually saying I, I can't have this in my life, my life is too full, I can respect you from a distance, but if you need more I can't do it. Again, it's like another boundary. So those are things to practice, but don't ever get jaded because the next person you meet could be a beautiful enhancement to your life. And the more we connect with loving beings, the more energy of goodness and love and light we send around the whole world. One other thing I wanna mention is when you are a loving person, many people wanna bring their baggage and say, could you, here's some baggage, I'm gonna just dump this all over you. Here's some toxicity and I want you to carry it. I'm just gonna share all my toxic crap with you. You're not a toxic dump. You don't want their crap, you don't want their negativity, and you don't want their baggage. So find that balance where you can be a good friend and listener. Offer some advice, replay back to them what they're saying, but remember, we're not their therapist. And we don't want to take hours of our day to be dumped on with negativity, toxicness, toxic waste, and their baggage. So again, don't carry other people's crap. God knows we make enough crap of our own to carry around and to deal with. That's what I always figure. Uh, in my life, I, it's a full-time job just managing me. So um, manage just yourself. And if we all take care of ourselves, it all it works out a lot better. So that's my message for today. Let me get my favorite hat. 
the one that doesn't fit, but you know, I just love this hat. Maybe I should find one that fits. Uh, there's another one I'll show you some week. It looks just like this, but it sits right on top of my head. So it looks a little, I don't know which looks, you be the judge and who cares? Who cares? Anyway, love yourself. Honor the beautiful person that you are. Let your light shine and share it. Share that love with everyone, knowing that it comes with risk, but also knowing that you have the power to honor your feelings, to protect yourself, and to set boundaries. And then open up to the next person with love. The more we can spread an epidemic of love, the more we can sneeze out goodness and love and kindness and compassion, the more we pass it on. That's how we shift the energy. And we don't want to carry any negativity while we're doing this. Life is too short to have negative vibrations. Life is too short to have toxic, negative people being energy vampires from us. Give it a try. See if it will work by loving them. If not, pray for the son of a bitch. Build a boundary and go on and do goodness. So creating calm with the Mad Hatter today. We are adding more and more TV programs. As we learn, we had a beautiful one last week. Marilee Snyder Nisiak did drumming and, and a beautiful meditation. However, we didn't have volume, so we need to learn how to get volume. Uh, there's so much we need to learn, but we are doing it one program at a time. Go to our webpage, please, please. It is www.creatingcalmnetwork.com. And while you are there, sign up for our weekly program guide. I send it out at midnight, the stroke of midnight when magic happens. Good energy and lots of magic. So I send it out at midnight, and I promise to make it interesting and beautiful. So sign up for it. See if you like it. You know what? There's no obligation. If you don't like it, just push the unsubscribe button and go on with your life. Make a boundary and put us on the other side. But I'm hoping you include us because we can make beautiful music together. Oh, does that mean I need to sing? I'm late. I'm late for a very important date. No time to say hello, goodbye, I'm late, I'm late, I'm late, except I'm not. Uh, my next date is in a few hours at, this is noon right now, 1215 Eastern Time. In less than three hours, I will be broadcasting with Maeve Crawford over in the UK. And we are going to be talking about something a little similar, something a little different, how to find peace or calm when your whole life is chaotic. And Believe me, this week my life has truly been chaotic. So you can tune in on the Creating Calm Network to Maeve Crawford's The Power of Love if you want to share that talk. Uh, when I, I, I'm looking forward to being interviewed by Maeve. I, this will be my first time, I think, when I've done that. And one thing about Maeve is that it really feels like I'm being wrapped in love. And hey, who doesn't like to feel wrapped in love? So... It's all good. Have a beautiful week. This has been Monday, followed by Tuesday, and WTF, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, or Whiskey Tango Foxtrot, however you choose to say those letters. In the trauma unit where I work, oftentimes we have a different way to say WTF. <sighs> it's a blessing. It's a blessing to share this time with you. I look forward to getting to know you. So go to my Facebook and friend me, and let's talk. And... I wondered, now you can see volume because we're all mad here. See, I learned a new trick. I learned a new trick. And now you can see. Happy as can be. Have a great week. Take care.